reaching for the sky was setting sights too low for Hilda Doris Buck Anderson. Her destiny was to surpass the stars, and she allowed generations of Canadian women along for the ride on her coattails. Every single Canadian woman now benefits from her tenacity, courage, and persistent determination, and yet most have never heard of even her name. This Mount Royal Junior College alumni was born in Medicine Hat, Alberta, on November 10, 1921, in very humble circumstances as an illegitimate child of an abandoned 31-year-old mother of two boys under the age of five. And so it was not surprising that, even though it was for just a few short months, Doris had been given up to a home for unwanted babies. On the day before, her eighth birthday, her mother married her biological father, and before she was ten, she had two younger brothers whom she adored. There was no recorded evidence that Doris' life was remarkably different than the thousands who also grew up in the Great Depression. Few people had money, and each made do with what they already owned. In other words, there was no record in Doris's young life that hinted to the greatness she would achieve, or what impact she would have on the lives of so many Canadian women. She, like so many other girls, was expected to choose from one of three careers, secretary, nurse, or school teacher, these professions were considered respectable and would allow her means to support herself until she was able to reach her ultimate aim in life, which was to be marriage. However, Doris thought that these women became little better than legal concubines and hypocrites. A path that had nothing except unrealistic fairy tales with which to try to fashion anything better. This was not the life for her. Doris would use her graduation from Teachers College in 1940, her two years of teaching, and her 1943 one year at Mount Royal Junior College as a stepping stone. Then, she transferred to the U of A the following year. After her graduation in 1945, she moved to Toronto. However, it was not until 1951 that she received her big break when she was hired on at the premier women's magazine, Chatelaine. She worked her way up to editor by 1957 where she stayed until 1977. Her career as editor at Chatelaine was where she started role as an advocate for women's rights. It was the genesis of her power and influence to effect real change by drawing attention to a myriad of injustices that had been inflicted upon women and women-related issues. For example, in 1960, Chatelaine ran the first article in North America on battered babies, although it took the next 10 years, laws were passed to try to protect these tiny victims. Her work as an activist continued through the remainder of her life and her positions included author, public member of the Ontario Press Council, chair of the Canadian Advisory Council of Women, chancellor of the University of Prince Edward Island, chair of the Ontario Press Council, co-founder of Fair Vote Canada, bi-weekly columnist for the Toronto Star, president of the National Action Committee, member of the Trilateral Commission, and several prestigious honorary awards including the distinguished LLD and honorary degree from several universities, including the University of Waterloo, the University of Alberta, Simon Fraser University, and Mount St. Vincent University. She has received the YWCA Women of Distinction Award, both the Officer of the Order of Canada and the Companion of the Order of Canada. Most of all, she helped to have the 1982 Canadian Charter of Rights and Freedoms Article 28 state that, notwithstanding anything in this charter, the rights and freedoms referred to in it are guaranteed equally to male and female persons. This Mount Royal alumni was a woman of courage who fought tirelessly so that all Canadian women would have equal opportunities. Unfortunately, sometimes this meant that she was put in harm's way. In the 1980s, she received a phone call from another one of the executives from the National Action Committee on the Status of Women. A letter had arrived with names from of some of the board executives. Doris's name was number one on the list. Thankfully, nothing came of this threat. Canada would be a better place if more women were able to be as bold and tenacious as Doris Anderson. For us, one of her most memorable quotes was, I am more firmly convinced than ever that unless there is more input from women in our society at every level, the world is doomed. Doris Anderson, Mount Royal History Little evidence is available for Hilda Doris Buck Anderson attendance at Mount Royal College. However, research suggests that in the year of 1939 she was accepted into this very college, Mount Royal University, famous alumni June 2008, N.D. After one year of her study, Doris Anderson had graduated from Mount Royal to pursue a teaching career. Two years later Doris became a transfer student with the University of Alberta to further her secondary education. She then graduated with a Bachelor's of Arts degree in 1945 in search of a journalism position in Alberta, Library and Archives Canada, 2010. The Chatelaine Magazine Company later hired Doris in 1951 and became the editor of this company in 1957, Library and Archives Canada, 2010. Mrs. Anderson's editorial efforts in the Chatelaine Magazine and her courageous activism for women's rights gave Mount Royal College reasoning to present the 1996 Alumni Achievement Award for her contributions within the Canadian society. Many years passed since Doris Anderson's name was acknowledged once again by Mount Royal.
The 2007 Mount Royal College's Alumni Magazine Spring Collection, Reflections, highlighted the importance of the Chatelaine magazine, and where her voice can be found within the pages, Reflector, 2007. Mount Royal University then re-establishes her worth to the university in the 100th birthday mural created by Judy Trafford, in late December of 2010, Avenue, 2011. Although, doors cannot easily be found within the institution itself, Mount Royal University applauses doors for her dedication to creating a better Canada, and honoured to have had a student with such success.